everybody, and welcome to 2ZQ Hot Takes, where we discuss issues both big and small. I am your host, the very handsome Tim Kirk, and this time, I'll be talking about keeping up appearances. No, not Hyacinth Bouquet and Richard Bucket. I mean, I haven't been keeping up with popular culture. I have to predicate this on stating that we are all our own worst enemies, and I have done my share of insanely stupid crap that nobody ever rescued me from. Nobody cared. Neither did I. Or what I cared about was wholly antithetical to a happy, healthy, successful life. In many of the ways I used to. Anyway. But that was then. I'm currently learning about AI prompting. I like that. But that is something altogether different than pop culture or local socializing. At this point, I almost never attend live performances. When did I stop giving a flying fuck about all this other drivel? There's no hostility. It's even less than apathy. I don't know who the hell most people in the public eye are anymore. Have not seen or heard any work by people I am aware of and avidly followed because when they first grabbed my and held my attention and moved my disposition to their favor, they were highly entertaining or inspiring or enlightening or attractive. I do listen to Pandora and Amazon Music when I am exercising and I do create my social media content and a lot of it at that. I get most of my stand-up from TikToks of like, you know, Bill Burr to Sebastian Maniscalco to a bunch of newbies who are quite funny, especially in small doses. However, I am really merely faking it when it comes to a lot of basic stuff and act like I have seen Tom Hanks movies or heard Bruce Springsteen albums or know something important Oprah said or a song by Taylor Swift or Bad Bunny. But I have no idea whatsoever. I have seen Lil Nas X videos because he is a hottie and sexy. Still don't know the words unless I hear the chorus with a lot of other people in the same place. And I don't go out to a lot of places where the videos are played. Could not tell you something by Jay-Z or Beyonce beyond their biggest, most well-known hits. I must insist that I have nothing against most of them, especially the very appealing, talented stars I have had affection for, for a lot of my life but I just don't keep up with their careers or creative output. I just don't. I saw the first Harry Potter movie and thought it was cute. I stopped seeing the second one about seven minutes into it and that was that. I couldn't tell you the name of a song or the last time I listened to a complete album or saw any movie where a line has become part of the cultural currency, integrated into the fabric of popular culture as it were. And when I do view that movie, or at least see a clip containing that line, and it hits me like a blinding flash that, oh, that's where that comes from. And I look around sheepishly, and I hope I didn't say it loud enough for anyone else to hear me. Oh, I get it. And don't say anything to anyone for fear that I am the goober in the group who is the only one who doesn't know loads of everyday expressions used by people one generation plus younger than me that are common knowledge and routine exchanges and are part of their shared generational heritage, but I have absolutely no idea what they have been referring to. And I've just pursed my lips and nodded, and for the most part, that has gone unnoticed or unremarked upon. I found that a lot of the people I have found myself attracted to in the past 10 years or so have all had an initial trait that I found attractive or stimulating, and then I see more and more of them, and more and more of them, and I just cannot stomach any of them at all again. Whatever attracted me in the first place turns out to be the most grating thing, and the rest of their personalities are vapid, puerile, and superficial, and apparently quite obscenely wealthy. <laughs> Not to mention seeing posts on Queerty about people I have absolutely no idea about. What their alleged contribution or significance is, and when I click on a link and they are in a video, they are presumptive Americans who speak the English language, I know the words, they just seem jumbled and incomprehensible in the context they are being used, in a way that I simply cannot grasp, do not understand the vernacular of, or care at all, of the purported relative substance, the context, or the appeal of any of these people and their collective output. 
Everyone else is very matter-of-fact about these people, events, and things, and they have all passed me by, so I just have to act casual and say nothing. Late-night talk shows are just not my thing at all, but I do like a few of the hosts. The shows are just not for me. And just forget about daytime TV. I do not watch daytime TV. I do not watch TV before like 8 o'clock at night anyway. I had a job a few years ago where we had to have 20 monitors on at all times, and one was on daytime TV talk shows and infomercials, and it was a literal freak show all aimed at old people and anyone else who can't turn the TV off. And everything is weirdly blue. And that's not to mention the people and cultural objects that have been there, meaning most people who have heard their names or are familiar with them, and they have produced a lot of stuff over time, who are annoying to me and or have worked or worn me down to the point where I am somewhat indifferent to their existence but have zero desire to have them imposed upon me in any setting. Yeah, (laughs) I guess, with that slight upward inflection in the S of guess, just stay the hell away from me. Do I have to play catch up and try to keep up with this ever self-obsoleting, mercurially changing dross? Will I sound like a nerd or a queen who has no idea about sports when everyone else is all charged up and focused and in the know? Or a dim-witted rube who thinks he understands the constitution which he doesn't, or has never actually read the Bible and acts like they do because they insist on saying so and are either hoping they don't get called on it or launch into hyper-reactionary accusatory mode when they are called on it, or they just have a few go-to verses they broadly apply because they are actual Bible verses, but are we cited completely out of context? As if I ascribe to any of that set of beliefs anyway? They're all making me feel uncomfortable. And for what it's worth, my wits have already been dimmed. Just like I don't do DoorDash or Getter or Postmates or Uber Eats or Grubhub, I admit to using OpenTable for the points, but I know these services eat into the profit margins for local businesses, and I don't want most of them to deliver to me in the first place, but taking away the business's incentive to make a buck is awful. And I absolutely loathe Yelp. I have never seen so many purposeful cranks in my life. If you are someone who knows, as in you have been in the business, you should be kinder or just tacitly omit scathing reviews for poor service or quality. Get on with your life and not do business with that org instead of going on and on and on about your unsatisfactory experience. You spoil brat. It makes you look like your growth has been stunted and you suffer from arrested development. Why are you so fixated on this personally disappointing round of self-indulgence, which, by the way, is not a universal affirmative? There are other fish in the ocean. Get on with your life. And far too many are ignoramuses in the first place who just want to vent their spleens and choose vulnerable, unsuspecting targets. At least the targets are vulnerable in the beginning. But they wise up almost immediately for the most part, And now so many places are held hostage to the slurs of know-nothings. I can guarantee that if a local business is bad, it will not stick around. So the waste of energy to fixate on being dissatisfied on, for the most part, one singular occasion or a complete misread of what the business is about and what they offer and how they execute on it is pointless. And why can't they be forgiving anyway? If you subject yourself to repeated poor experiences, A good part of that is your burden. So I don't subscribe to all that many delivery services or belief systems. For the most part, I don't make it a habit to post harsh reviews and just don't want to look like an inane ninny in an attempt to keep up with passing fancies. There was a guy I have not seen in years, mostly because I do not go to bars with any frequency, and he was, by the way, a regular in a local bar, mostly for happy hour because he was no kid. And could just not handle himself or have the stamina to stick around when it started getting busy. And it's a place where I have patronized, but not in a long time. I mean, at least 10 years. And he was known as That's Nice. An older guy with uh, the, uh, let's say, jauntily askew Fred Mertz golf cap and a halted sense of diction. Always asking if you got a light and interjecting by stating, that's nice to everything anyone says and responding to private normal chit chat that was not about him or not inclusive of him 
because he wanted to feel included and not ignored. I felt bad for the guy but started avoiding him on sight. There was also a kid who was bright-eyed and witty and well-dressed who was gregarious and fun, who started drinking a little heavy at happy hours, and his wits started slipping, and his gut started gaining, and his clothes were not as natty, and his complexion became poxed, and he repeated himself and started laughing at his own comments and slumping into a seat, and he started hanging out with older, unappealing influences who were poor choices, who used party drugs, and wanted to use him for his body, and they did. And he wound up bereft of his friends and his looks and was a cackling, drunken, drug-addled young man who lost all of his charm and poise and the sharpness and quick-wittedness became dull and slow and sloppily attired and slovenly in appearance. He lost it. I don't want to be either of these guys. He just became another casualty. But then I just stopped caring. Maybe I am already one of those guys. Yeah. And now, people are throwing things at performers while they are performing on stage. Never mind people silently pointing at text above or below them in frame on social media videos in order to tell you something you did not need to know or how to do something completely irrelevant to your life. What are, what are those videos? What is, what's that supposed to be? I love the comedian impressionist Matt Friend. I think this kid is super talented. But I have absolutely no idea who some of the people who he is doing impressions of are. I have no idea. I have never seen Breaking Bad, Succession, The Sopranos, except for the clips of the mob guys and leather at a gay club. That is it, really. And saw just one and only one full episode of Sex in the City. All of those BuzzFeed videos of people tasting food from different cultures became tiresome very quickly, so not missed. The Try Guys started to make me wince. Who gives a shit? I have never seen RuPaul's Drag Race. And I love drag queens. They were a riot. Just hate those feeble, contrived competitions on reality shows. The competition might be real, but the artificial settings and the contests make me cringe. And it was just not my appetite. I love drama. I am a bad gay. I don't glam. I don't squeal over things that seem pre-adolescent to me. I am sentimental and passionate. I get emotional. I cry. I am, however. I'm moved by so much of what a generation or two younger than me finds entertaining or engaging. I can't make out what they are saying. I know they are using words or parts of words. I think just about every bar on Bar Rescue fails. I have checked the update website on most of them and they are either out of business or they're limping along or they did it just to be on TV, like the middle-class couples who got local notoriety by being on Trading Spaces, which conned me for a bit. The businesses closed or limped along, and a scant few succeeded. But come on, it's phony. I have no use for the unconvincing confrontations and the phony scenarios, or it is all faked. And for the same reason, every restaurant and house makeover and Queer Eye nonsense doesn't move me at all. I don't give a fuck. I find it crassly annoying. None of this motivates, stimulates, or touches me at all. Yeah, get off my lawn. Thanks for listening. See you next time. And as the kitties say, peace out.